Hey, Mick Holly again. Hope you enjoyed yesterday's video, Compel or Repel, and you learned about my sales mentor, Jerry Burke. I'm giving you another Jerry Burke story today because uh, I think it's very salient for salespeople. And it's called, Don't Talk to the Monkey When You Should Be Talking to the Organ Grinder. And this was an expression that Jerry used with me on a particular campaign that I'll tell you about. And I said, well, what do you mean by that, Jerry? He says, well, in the old fairgrounds, you know, there used to be you know, entertainment, there'd be a dancing monkey and the, next to the monkey would be a, a guy playing the organ and he'd be turning this crank. And so he's the organ grinder playing a tune and the monkey's dancing to the tune. He said, well, the monkey is the dancing to the tune. The organ grinder is the one in charge. So in a sales campaign, don't be talking to the monkey who's just dancing to the tune. You really want to be talking to the organ grinder or the person who's making the decision. So the purpose of today's video is to encourage you always to get to the decision maker because the job of the salesperson is to be able to sell to the decision maker or at least to deliver the decision maker to the whole sales process. So I was conducting this particular campaign Monday morning uh, about 9.30. Jerry always arrives a little late and he comes in. He goes, mate, what's happening with Premier Biscuits? And Premier Biscuits is a company that as the license to put Cadbury's chocolate on digestive biscuits and sell those. Very, very tasty. You can probably get them over here in the supermarkets. And I talked to the manufacturing director. His name was Ian. And, um, you know, Ian was very reluctant to bring us in. I was having a number of conversations with Ian. I really wasn't getting anywhere. I met Rajiv once who said, Mick, I've got some manufacturing issues. I'd like to go talk to Ian. And then, you know, Rajiv kind of decoupled from the conversation. And I really wasn't getting anywhere with Ian. So Jerry comes in and he said, Mick, what's happening with Premier? I said, well, Ian's very reluctant. I, I, I really don't think that he wants to do this, Jerry. You know, I've tried everything. I'm calling him. He said, Mick, you're talking to the wrong person. You should be talking to the organ grinder. You need to go talk to Rajiv. I said, Jerry, I said, if I, if, you know, if I go to Rajiv, I'm going to upset Ian and, 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 and Ian's not going to buy from us. He said, Mick, Ian isn't going to buy from you anyway because he's not the one in charge and he feels a little unsettled and probably threatened by the approach. He said, so you have to go and see Rajiv. So he said, pick up the phone. So I called Rajiv's secretary and uh, she said, no, no, Rajiv says you need to talk to Ian. You need to talk to Ian, Mick. I said, Jerry. He said, he said, I've got to talk to Ian. He said, call him up, tell him you need to speak to him. So I called him up again and his secretary was, I mean, she was a she did her job really, really well, but she was a dragon when she thought you were trying to, you know, usurp the process. She was very protective of Rajiv's time. And I said, I can't get through, I can't get through to Rajiv. He won't take my call. He said, well, Mick, you know the answer. He said, I want you to get in your car and I want you to drive there. Well, it was in the Wirral. The Wirral is just below Liverpool on the left side of, of England. And it was about a three and a half, four hour drive. He said, Mick, I said, I want you to go up there and uh, he said, I don't want you to come back. So, you know, get a hotel and then you sit in his lobby until Rajiv sees you. So <laughs> off I go. Uh, so so I, get, I get to the site and I go into the lobby and I pick up the phone. I wish I could remember her name. I said, hey, it's Mick Holly. Mick, I told you, Rajiv, Rajiv won't speak to you. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm calling for a different reason. She said, what? I said, I wanted to let you know I'm in the lobby. <laughs> She said, what are you doing in the lobby? You don't have an appointment. I said, I know, but it's very, very important that I talk to Rajiv. He said, well, he's not going to see you. I said, well, I, you know, I'm going to sit in the lobby. I've got some paperwork to do. This was before mobile phones and, and, and computers. I mean, I just sat there and I wrote a few sales letters. I said, well, but I, I've booked into a local hotel. So, you know, I'm sure Rajiv has got some time this week. I'm just going to wait until he can see me. She said, you can see me. Puts the phone down. So I just sit in the lobby. I'm writing a few sales letters, twiddling my thumbs, you know. And after about an hour, I can see the the, the receptionist picks up the phone, and there's a quiet conversation going on. It's like, is he still there? Yeah, he's still here. Puts the phone down. Another half an hour goes by, nothing. Then after about two hours, his secretary comes down the, up the stairs. She says, like, "Come on, she's Rajiv will see you." So I walk in, see Rajiv, and Rajiv, he goes, what, Mick, what, what, what do you want? What do you want? I said, well, I want to help you, Rajiv. He said, well, I've told you to talk to Ian. I said, well, you told me. 
you had issues in manufacturing and productivity and quality and you wanted to see a step change in improvement. And yes, you did ask me to go and talk to Ian. And I've talked to Ian, but unfortunately Ian you know, can't quite see the big picture like you can, Rajiv, and Ian is part of the problem. And Ian isn't going to invite me in to help him. So you've told me you had a need, I can fulfil that need, and I can help. So well, what, what, what do you want? I said, oh, well, I want you to go tell Ian that he's bringing us in. Go and sit outside. <laughs> so I sit outside his office. Ian walks by, goes into Rajiv's office, 20 minutes. You know, they're obviously having some kind of big debate. And after 20 minutes, I get called in. And Rajiv and Ian are sitting there. And Ian's there looking very tight-lipped. And Rajiv says, Ian has got something he would like to share with you, Mick. And Ian comes over and says, yes, on, on further reflection, Mick, he said, well, I do think that we need some help. And I wonder if you and your team could start on Monday. And that, that, that uh, particular piece of work uh, led to three consecutive engagements, a very, very significant amount of work, absolutely transformed uh, that operation. Rajiv was very happy. Uh, you know, Ian, you know, got a better operating environment. Um, but it was very uncomfortable at the time. So sometimes we have to go through those comfort barriers and, and hone in on what's important. But you do need to, and I see this all the time. I was with a client the other day. That, that they had a multi-million dollar bid and they wouldn't go and talk to the decision maker. Oh no, if we go and talk to the decision maker. So this was a, you know, a, a contractor in, in the commercial flooring business. You've got an owner who's building a big corporate, you know, building, then you've got the general contractor, and the general contractor selects various subcontractors. This one happened to be a flooring bid, but it's a big flooring bid. You know, it's mega millions of dollars, and, and, and they lost the bid. And I said, well, were you talking to the, to the owner? Hot sh shock, horror. No, we can't talk to the owner. That's, that's the, that's the uh, general contractor's job. They present three bids and a recommendation, and we, were, we, we, we thought we would be recommended. What, you're going to let somebody else sell your services? The owner's got this multi-million dollar building project going on with all of this risk and one of your core capabilities is risk management and you weren't able to articulate that to the owner. I said, I bet you that the people that won that project did go and see the owner. I mean, thank oh, you. Oh, no, we, got, we might upset, we might upset our, our general contractor. Well, you lost the bid anyway. And you will lose the bid if you don't get to the decision maker. So... What I do employ you to do is always go and talk to the decision maker. Even if you think that it's going to um, perturb the person you're working with most closely. You know, you can go to the influencer and say, look, we, you know, I do want an opportunity to speak to, in this case, you know, Rajiv. How do we work together? How can we go together? But you, 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 you set that out from the out, outcome. When they, when they first invite you, you you want to know who it is, and you say, well, together we'll go and present our case. And very early on, they'll say, yeah, no, but, but once you've looked under the carpet and seen all of their issues and you put them, they're very reluctant about letting you go and talk to the decision maker. So you need to set that expectation early, but it is your right. Your, you and your company are investing in their company, and it's perfectly right and proper that you go and talk to the decision maker. So uh, go ahead, go and call that decision maker, have some fun, and I'll see you in the next video.